Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to do some wildlife. I'm going to show you this drawing of a cougar in snow. It was done in charcoal pencils, so let me show you how I did it. First let's go over the materials, then we're going to talk about the sketch, the reference and things like that. I'm going to use a Faber Castell graphite pencil to do the sketch. I'm going to use the Fabriano sketching paper to work on. It's a smaller size paper, about 6 times 8 inches. And as for the main drawing tools, those are going to be my Master's Touch woodless charcoal pencils, two grades, medium and soft. Most of the work is going to be done with a medium charcoal pencil. The reference is going to be attached if you want to examine it or try it yourself. And as for the composition, it's uh, very simple with a cougar or puma in the middle and just a little bit of background under it, just a little bit of snow under it, so it's going to be another vignette. Um, now, as for the way that I approach drawing sketches, I know that a lot of artists recommend trying to break complex objects into um, simpler geometrical shapes or trying to see more complex objects as simpler geometrical shapes. Honestly, most of the time that's not really what I do. I just uh, sort of um, pay attention to the angles and proportions and try to get those to look as close as possible and if you don't get them to be exactly the same doesn't really matter because when you're drawing animals when you're drawing wildlife things like that there is not as much pressure as when you're drawing portraits where you have to have exact proportions here if some of the things are a little bit off it doesn't really matter you can just fix that do a little bit of erasing or adjust it as you go along. Anyway, I'm moving on to the main part of the drawing process here and I picked up a medium charcoal pencil. These woodless charcoal pencils, the soft one and the medium one, both look the same. The, the only way that you can tell the difference is that the medium one is in the pencil holder and I'm using it right now. And now I'm using the soft one a little bit for this darker tip of the tail because uh, the fur is a little bit darker there so I'm going to make that a bit darker than the rest of course when I lay down that texture and when I draw some of these smaller hairs after that I do a little bit of blending I mostly use flat brushes and uh, what that does is it softens the texture and makes the fur look more dense and more natural now I'm going to be drawing a lot of these smaller marks to imitate a very or relatively short fur. So now is the time to talk about drawing fur and this is something that I often talked about in my videos because I've done many many drawings of furry animals and many wildlife drawings. When you draw fur you have to pay attention to two things, the length of the fur and the direction of the fur. You have to try to match the length of the fur and the direction of the fur with the length of your strokes, your pencil strokes, and the direction of your pencil strokes. So, if you see that the fur in a particular part of the body of the animal is short, your pencil sh uh, marks need to be very short, or you need to find a way to imitate the appearance of really short fur. And if you find it for example, the fur grows sideways or it appears horizontal. You can't make vertical marks. So that makes sense, I hope. Anyway, when you have really short fur and uh, the puma's body is covered with pretty short fur and what makes it look even finer and shorter is the fact that we're looking at this from a distance. This is a smaller drawing. It's not a close-up drawing of the animal. You need to find a way to imitate the appearance of that really fine texture, that really short fur. And the way to do that is not to draw every single line and every single dot, because that would be both 
time consuming and honestly probably impossible and it would end up looking kind of ugly. So you have to find a way to make the pencil work for you and the way to do that is very simple. You just hold the pencil kind of sideways rather than perpendicular to the paper and you allow it to produce a little bit of texture of its own because the pencil is always going to produce a bit of texture in combination when it interacts with the paper especially if the paper has a little bit of tooth and if you just drag the pencil uh, it will create a fine looking texture that kinda looks like short fur and later you can soften that texture using brushes you can add on top of that like I'm doing now by making some parts of that fur a little bit darker. For example, this part of the hind leg is facing away from the light sources and, and ca catching a little bit of shadow from the rest of the thigh, so it's going to be a little bit darker. So I'm going back in, adding a little bit more on top, both shading it at the same time, but at the same time refining the texture. So in, in this case, you'll see that I'm uh, doing two things at once, essentially. I'm shading and I'm uh, at the same time achieving a pretty realistic looking texture and eventually what you will see is that I will end up with something that kind of looks like really short fur and all I had to do to achieve that was just hold my pencil like this and gently drag it over the surface of the paper sometimes making tiny circular motions sometimes back and forth motions but mostly just dragging it and trying to imitate that appearance of really short fur. And every now and then I would go back in and soften it with a brush. And the good thing about brushes is that while they blend pretty well, they don't remove that texture entirely. Those tiny lines, that, that fine texture is still there. It just softened a little bit because when you use a brush, uh, it pushes the charcoal dust into those um, lighter spaces of the paper and that creates a little bit uh, less contrast, that texture becomes a little bit less coarse, less uh, distracting, it becomes a bit softer and the fur starts to look a bit softer and a bit more realistic because you can't draw every single mark, every single dot, so when you use a brush that actually creates that illusion of density of those marks. And another effect that the brush is creating is that uh, whenever you blend, either with a brush or any other blending tool, you're essentially, like I said, pushing the charcoal material into those lighter spaces. It makes everything a little bit darker. So you need to take that into account while you're working because things will get a little bit darker as you shade, uh, as you blend rather. So once you apply the pencil first, you, you need to remember that once you blend it, it will get darker. So there's no need to overdo it. Here at the top, the fur appears a little bit darker, so I'm going to use a little bit more. So when I want to make something darker and still have that nice texture, I simply go over that area a couple more times, or maybe I use just a little bit more pressure, but most of the time I'm just sort of skimming across the surface of the paper, barely touching the paper, and this charcoal pencil, because it's so soft and it leaves a lot of residue, it leaves uh, that uh, charcoal dust onto the paper, and then I can just blend it a little bit using a brush. Now the reason why I prefer flat brushes, and I mostly use soft synthetic brushes, but sometimes I also use harder bristle brushes. The reason why I prefer these smaller flat brushes is because they give you a lot of precision when you blend. They're like a precision tool, like a knife or something, because you can use them to point that flat tip towards the edge and that way you blend all the way to the edge and you don't cross the edge. And that allows you to blend while at the same time preserving clean edges. And a clean edge to value is extremely important if you want to explain to the viewer where one object ends and the other one begins or where the main subject ends and the background begins. So speaking of the background, I like to do vignettes. In some cases I do the full background with everything. 
And even when I do backgrounds, I often do out of focus bokeh backgrounds because they're not very distracting and then they allow they allow you to bring out the main subject. Now here, this scene takes place in the snow, so it's going to be white anyway, but it's going to be like a vignette because I'm just going to draw a little bit of snow and a little bit of shadow under the animal just to give it some context. Um, and um, that's probably going to do it. Uh, so I'm mostly going to focus on the animal itself. Here I'm drawing some darker marks that kind of looks like look like stripes, but they're not stripes, they're folds in the fur. You will see that when you're drawing furry animals, when, wherever the body tends to bend a lot, you will find either folds in the skin or folds in the fur. And those folds in the fur follow the folds in the skin on those areas of the, those parts of the body where the body twists and bends a lot. For example, this shoulder area between the leg and the, the shoulder or the torso area, or the neck area, for example, or the waist area, etc. So there will always be some of those creases or folds in the fur. And where the fur is longer, like for example on the neck and the chest area, you'll find more of those shadow areas dividing the uh, fur into smaller clumps and kind of following the shape of the body, the muscles of the body, the, uh, those folds in the skin where the body twists and bends to one side or the other. This part here around the shoulder also needs to be a little bit darker. So you can see my approach is always to lay down the basic texture and the base of value simply by dragging my pencil. Then uh, I do a little bit of blending. And if I want to make something a bit darker, I simply go over that area one more time or a couple more times, adding a bit more value, a bit more texture, making it a bit darker in the process. This whole uh, chest and shoulder area is going to appear a little bit lighter for the most part, but the top part here, the top of the back and the neck, is a little bit darker because the fur is a little bit darker there. So in terms of the shading and the values, some parts of this drawing are a little bit confusing. It's not an overly complex drawing. I mostly chose to focus on the texture. But some parts are a little bit confusing because you have the, the light source which is coming from above but then the top part of the, the animal's body is a little bit darker because of the darker fur and then the bottom part is also lighter because of the lighter fur and there's, there's also a little bit of reflected light coming from below from that snow so that's kind of interesting. Here I'm adding some of these folds in the fur on the neck. And now I'm going to try to push that charcoal in a little bit harder using a harder brush, so brush and then work on top of that with a, with a soft brush. And I'm just going to keep blending and blending till I'm sure that I'm achieving a similar tone as uh, the rest of the body or as needed. Now if you're worried that the brush will uh, remove too much of that texture, don't be because brushes allow you to preserve that texture and if you feel like you've maybe softened the texture a little bit too much you can always bring it back in by using the exact same approach just hold your pencil sideways and drag it to create a fine looking texture and that'll do the trick now another thing that i forgot to mention is that it's very useful to keep your pencil really sharp during this entire process. That will usually not be a problem because um, it's not like you're going to be drawing a lot of lines which require you to pull a lot of pressure, to, to pull with a lot of pressure, so you won't be wearing down the tip much. But uh, in order for this texture to look better, it's better for the pencil tip to be really sharp because you are shading kind of with the tip, but um, how should I explain this? You're holding the pencil 
almost uh, shading with a broader side of the pencil but that sharp tip is still doing its thing because it's producing those tiny marks um, now if you were holding the pencil perpendicular to the paper you would be making uh, cleaner, darker, more deliberate marks and sometimes I do that as well so for example when I'm drawing these folds in the skin where I need to add a little bit more value um, I can do that or when I need to draw slightly longer hairs I can just pull short marks that kind of look like short fur so I can use a combination of these two approaches basically making smaller deliberate marks to imitate short fur and just dragging my pencil to imitate the texture of short fur basically allowing the pencil to work for me so I'm using two things more deliberate strokes and allowing the pencil to work for me you have to know how to use both in order to create a nice looking texture without actually putting in too much time and too much effort into it and now as you can see I'm moving on to the head and I'm working on the facial features, drawing the eyes, the ears and the nose. Uh, these are kind of tiny because this is a smaller drawing so I, um, I have to be a little bit more careful here. I'm leaving some lighter space, spaces here, lighter lines for the whiskers so I'm going to work around those and this inner part of the ear is a bit dark, a bit lighter sorry because it's covered with some lighter fluffier fur and then the rest of the ears are kind of dark and um, in the shadow so I'm going to do a little bit of refining with the tertullian and then shade the rest of the head using the similar approach just dragging my pencil and then blending with a brush if I find that some parts of the face are a little bit too dark I can just take away a bit of value by using erasers or I can add a bit more value to other parts of the uh, face like for example the top of the head has a few stripe like shapes uh, that are a little bit darker and also there's a little bit of darker fur here around the eyes so I'm just making some of those smaller adjustments and um, here I'm also refining these folds in the fur on the neck and I think that the fur on the neck is starting to look fairly realistic. So sometimes when I need to draw something specific I'm, I, I, you can see how I change the way that I hold the pencil and I make marks that are a little bit more deliberate and are a little bit more precise. So here I went back in to refine the shape and the appearance of the head by dabbing on some of, some of those areas which needed to be a little bit lighter because uh, I find that a uh, kneaded eraser is an extremely useful tool when drawing things like this because uh, the Tombow Mono Zero eraser or some other eraser would probably you can use it as well and I've used it a little bit here as well but uh, it would ruin this texture if you used it too much but with a kneaded eraser you can just dab on a certain area and you can make it lighter simply by lifting up charcoal and the texture is still there now the other front leg here we have a lot of these folds in the fur on the around the knee and I'm putting in those first, those darker areas first, and then I'm just adding a bit more base value and texture by dragging the pencil gently and then gently blending on top of that. And uh, then I'm just dabbing a little bit again with the kneaded eraser to make some parts of those clumps of fur a little bit lighter so that they would stand out a little bit more and appear more three dimensional. Um, so now the legs and the body are mostly done. I'm just going to do a little bit of refining here and there by going back and maybe doing a little bit of work with an eraser. Here, here and there I can pull some lighter marks with a Tombow Mono Zero eraser or maybe do some final touches with a charcoal pencil. 
and also clean up some of the edges. I did, also did a little bit of refining on uh, the anatomy of the animal so that some of the muscles would maybe stand out a little bit more. And finally, I decided to do a bit more work on the snow here under the animal and I decided to do that with uh, Tutilian. A Tutilian is a great drawing tool because once it picks up a little bit of charcoal you can use it to draw lighter marks uh, which don't have such clean edges so it's kind of like a really dull really light pencil and um, it can be very useful in certain cases so that's what I'm using here just to create some suggestions of, uh, of an uneven um, deep snow and to add a little bit of shadow under the animal just uh, blending that a little bit with a brush to add a bit of value so that some parts of that snow are a little bit darker and then cleaning up the edge of those lighter parts of the snow, lighter edges of the snow in the foreground. And as you can see the drawing is almost done. I also dabbed on the one of those hind legs a little bit to make it a bit lighter because I felt that it was a little bit too dark. And now I'm just going to put my signature here on the lower right side so that I can balance things out a little bit. Anyway, the drawing is done. I hope you enjoyed the drawing process. Don't forget to subscribe, give me a like, comment, and for longer videos, full length videos, and more content, check out my Patreon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.